Fine evening. I now bring you our first match between the Toho Project and Zenith of Origin. In the upper right hand or lower right hand corner of our map, which is known as Doda or Koda, uh, Science Peak of Science is what it says. I have uh, wife's mushrooms are cold. And in the upper left hand corner, spawning as our Red Terran, it's going to be ZY Cart. Let's go ahead and get the music back on. This is actually my ladder, my ladder setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, optimize this for casting. All right, so here we go, boom, and now we're good to go. All right, so there's gonna be a little bit of lag. Of course, I am connecting from Taiwan to China, and this is of course international firewalling we're talking about as a main issue. In the upper left-hand corner, spawning as our red Terran. Oh, wait. I've already introduced these guys. What the hell is wrong with me? Okay, we're back to the game at hand. Let's put it that way. This looks like it's much to the tune of a Reaper opener coming from our Terran player. Meanwhile, our Protoss is going with the Oso standard double gas for Cybernetic score, and what I imagine will eventually be his expansion. The real question is, what? when is the expansion going to be taken? Because the most standard thing to do as Protoss is to at least throw down your Cybernetic score before your nexus. Now the real question is, will he wait for the mothership core to be finished then, or will he go ahead and pump out some sentries for that more safe expansion method? We'll find out in a short amount of time. So we have our SCV moving out now, and that is most likely to annoy the hell out of our Terran by going into the main, or excuse me, our Protoss rather, by going into the main, poking around, seeing what he's going for, and things of that nature. Okay, he sees everything, the timings look normal. Standard, rather. And... Just wants to see if there is... Well, I'm not entirely sure what he's doing right now. He's waiting to see where the Chrono Boost goes. And it goes back to the Nexus. So he has a better idea of what's going to happen now. If he had seen it going towards, say, the Cybernetics Core, then he would know he's in a lot of trouble because that means his opponent has got some kind of uh, fast pressure on his mind. So a pause has been requested, and we're not entirely sure why. Of course, switching from one server to another, he says, sorry... Uh, switching from one client to another. Uh, oh, okay, it's a hotkey issue. He says, Oh, he says, uh, someone... I think that says his keyboard position, but it could also be in reference to... I think... No, no, I think that's his key positioning. He says, someone, someone, someone corrected my key's positioning, and I think that's in reference to maybe his hotkeys on his keyboard. All right, so now it looks like we are ready and hopping back into this game. The Reaper isn't going to see anything too terribly new that the probe didn't, or excuse me, rather the SCV didn't. So, uh, this is something that can be a little bit dangerous, but slight supply block from our Terran, but of course, nothing that a little bit of time won't fix. Twilight Council going down in a forward position coming from... Uh, I guess we'll just call this cold mushrooms, if you will. I Yes, I literally translated that from its name that you could see there to what you see here. All right, so z White Cart now is going to do some bouncing around. He's going to make sure that there's no silly proxies or anything going, going down on the map. But the funniest thing about this game is it's right under his nose. He just didn't see it with his SCV previously. And the Mothership Corps was in such a perfect place to protect it from being scouted. And so too are these Stalkers. You can tell, like just by the positioning of these Stalkers, you can tell where uh, the tech is going to be, I think, in some ways, if you're Terran. Then again, I'm just saying that because we have caster vision, so yeah. Oh, here we go. So this natural expansion should be ready to go almost virtually uncontested. I would like to see a bunker at the forward position here, but no one's perfect. And there goes a scan from our Terran, and it doesn't hit its mark. He does, of course, see three gateways, which should basically speak volumes to what is happening now in-game. So he sees three gateways. 
And at this stage in the game, if we're talking about viable plays, that would basically mean anything that has to do with gateway eccentric units, and that's why he's building a missile turret here. He's afraid it could possibly be Dark Templar. Which later on it could be, but it's not going to be now. This is actually just going to be, uh, it looks like a blink stalker bust. Now, checking the weak spots of this base, I do want to say that there are no marauders here whatsoever, and that means if those stalkers decide to take the back door and hop in, well, they, they have a free win. Potentially speaking. Potentially speaking. Alright, here we go. Protoss player, I'll check his team out in just a minute. But let's go ahead and, I, I guess I could do that right now. From All I know is that both these players are... Okay, from Zykart is from Zenith of Origin, our Terran player. Our Protoss player is from the Toho Project, and his name... Well, that doesn't help too much. All these names are written in Chinese. Uh, it could be six, it could be... Well, uh, I guess you guys can just type out bracket and check out the names that way. Stim isn't going to be done for another minute, or almost nearly... 100 seconds of in-game time, but they're still going to get out here and do a lot of damage to the stalkers And that's all they needed. They just needed to power through it, but Those are blink stalkers, and I don't want to say that was a total fake out, but it was Definitely a good way of keeping his opponent from taking the natural that is to say our blue protoss player <clears throat> There's a possibility of four different players on the Toho Project roster that the Protoss player could be. And I'm glad to see that Zoo has picked up a new Terran player. I really am. And it's... Am I looking at this right? Loop has switched his race to Terran? Loop has switched his race to Terran. He... If I'm not mistaken, previously he played as a Protoss in Wings of Liberty. If we Google that, I'm pretty sure you'll find something besides Terran for Zoo Loop. More barracks going down at the natural, and in case you guys couldn't tell by now, it's just going to be straight up. Uh, what is it? Straight up Bio versus our Protoss player. <clears throat> but that's to be expected versus Protoss. The real question is, what is going to come out when? Is it going to be a heavy load of Marauders first, or are we going to see resources poured into upgrades for Bio before we see... A healthier chunk of Marauders added to the dose. And a huge shout out to Nico Thien. It's been such a long time, my brother. So glad to see you back here. Sorry for that sudden, without warning, hype. And as you can see, the Marine and Marauder count is now picking up. Oh boy. Stalker's getting just a little bit overzealous. Nice stem. Doesn't kill a Stalker for his time, which is actually a very good uh, trade, if you will. One Marine for a Blink, always worth. Always worth. Unless maybe it's gonna... Unless it's a Blink that you have to absolutely have to get away from your opponent's army. Now, the question is, what does our Protoss do to defend against the retaliation that's coming from our Terran? This is something to be expected at this stage in the game. Excuse me. Quit smoking cigarettes, still coughing. What's wrong with Breaker today? Okay. Ooh, and I like this, I like this. Do we have a Dark Shrine in the background? We're about to find out. We do not, and there's a scan coming from our Terran. Just as he's about to make a Doom Drop, he sees that the main is nearly clean. He saw one Stalker going off in that direction and pulls back. Thank God for Observers, right? <clears throat> okay, so it looks as though we have a back door here coming from Zykart. That is our. Excuse me, not Zykart, but rather <laughs> our Protoss player from the Toho Project. And beyond that. Terran upgrades are now coming in a little bit late, at least for the infantry armor, but oh boy. The mobility of a Terran bio army is almost 
never exploited, but that was a nice pick off on one of those medevacs. It means that I believe this entire chunk of bio is not able to get home in medevacs. So there's not really a completely 100% safe foolproof way for them to get home, but they can try. Nonetheless, as long as this army is divided, we have Zykart in a huge heap of trouble because he's not able to actually do anything about this army that's coming to his front door. The only thing that really vouches for him at this point is I don't see an observer in his main army. Boom. Nice blink out. But again, that Widow Mine's gonna go on the reload. Another scan coming down from our Terran. Just to see, is there a third or not? There is no third here or at this location. That means that this is a two base all in bust coming from Cold Mushrooms. And if Cold Mushrooms is unable to break his opponent at this location, within the next few seconds, the game will eventually, well, if he can land this third, assuming he can land this third, he'll be able to outscale his opponent. Stalkers, Nexus Cannon at the natural. This is where things get interesting, ladies and gentlemen. We see the blinks coming back slow and steady, but it looks as though this is going to be cleaned up by our Protoss. So, for the time being, wow. Cold Mushrooms is relatively safe. It's Zykart who might be in a little bit of trouble right now. I was thinking perhaps, just perhaps, he could use um, his army divided at that location and try and surround this and then take it all out. There's no Mothership Core with it. It would be perfect. But that's not the case. There's a lot of Marauders here. Those Widow Mines are waiting for their opportunity to strike. Now, fun fact of the day, for those of you who might be a little bit new to Heart of the Swarm, or at least StarCraft as a whole, Widow Mines will actually do full damage versus Immortals. That means Immortals Hardened Shields don't do anything against Widow Mines. This Phoenix is trying to aggro. That wouldn't mind. And these four marines are trying to keep keep on keeping on. And I like this move. This is going to be cutesy. Oh, snap. Pick off on that probe. Three force fields for one marine or at least a handful of bio. I don't think that was quite worth it. Mm, Widow mine still not lit off. I mean, right now, our Protoss is stuck between a rock and a hard place. He hasn't had a chance to get his third started. His bases are going depleted. Now there's the big move forward, throwing out those force fields, keeping our Terran from exiting the natural. But at the same time, it seems as though our Terran will have all the time in the world, assuming he can find one moment to actually land his command center. One Widow Mine has been ignited, another one going forward, and it looks like that one will be uncontested and wasted. But we still have another and another. <clears throat> Here we go, the move forward. Oh boy, nice hit on that one last Widow Mine, and it looks as though this is an army that's waiting to be cleaned up by our bio-sporting Zykart from Zoo. An excellent choice of a Terran player to pick up, by all means of the human imagination. He's now pushing back with a 40 supply lead. But he's going to be greeted by Colossus. The only thing that's really going for him in this position is the fact that he's going to have a third base. He doesn't have any Vikings to deal with Colossus, and now we've got double Colossus production in the background. Here we go. Oh boy. There go the force fields. Dividing up that army, doing a damn good job, I might add. We, if it's one thing that's definitely working for our Terran. At this moment, he's got a lot of beef in the form of Marauders, but those Widow Mines are going to be picked off. They are forfeit. They do get the Observer, which means it can't be used again, but at the same time, I don't think there's any more Widow Mines out on the map. Zero. Absolutely zero Widow Mines are out on the map. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. So that's what I like to call a stalemate play. The two Observers are now on the way. I'm wondering, is two a little bit too many? Things are starting to scale off in favor of our Protoss at this moment. What I mean to say by that is he was down 40 supply just a few minutes ago, and now he's only down by about 20 supply. He's got four Colossus production, and I don't think Zykart knows about this. He only saw one Robo. That's right. Now he sees four Colossus, and he must know that something is wrong. The Marauders are just being eaten alive by this. It's like, what are Immortals? I've got four Colossus. That's all I need, and I am pushing back at your face. You are now down in supply, my friend. You run home. Third base begins to get saturated for our Protoss while our Terran already has his third fully saturated. <clears throat> so the game wears on. The 
question is, what is the choice going to be from both players? We do, of course, have both of the mains going dry as they do uh, tend to get that way at the 20 minute mark. Oh snap, oh snap. But typically on three base income for Protoss, that's when you would try to get High Templar into the mix. But at this point, I do want to say, I, I feel like our Terran's being just a teeny bit stubborn. And what do I mean by stubborn? He's not getting Vikings into the mix, but at the same time, I don't think his economy will support that. He's His main's going dry. He doesn't have a fourth base. You want to get, you, typically you start getting Vikings and Ghosts into the mix when you have three fully saturated bases. And the way this game has panned out is just a little bit awkward. Here we go. That is four Colossus against this entire bio army. There's only a handful of Vikings in the sky, but they are doing work, taking down one thus far. Some of the Marauders are saying, hey man, we don't need to do work. We're letting the Vikings do that. Stalker's trying to take down what they can on the ground, but it looks like this is a fight that Zykart can hold off against. And in this position, generally speaking, as a Protoss, you don't want to push back, uh, push your opponent too far back. If you do something like that, you can be overextending. And that makes it hard to get away, especially if you lose your most valuable units, in this case, Colossus. These two, I think, are the newbies to the army because they don't have that many kills. <clears throat> and at this point, I think the strength of the Terran economy, Terran has mules, is, or at least, at least the strengths of Terran in general, is starting to show just a little bit. There we go, Guardian Shield going down with this. He's gonna give it one more shot. He realizes that if he can't do it now, he must not be able to later on in the game. That's a lot of Stalkers going down. The Immortals trying to do what work they can. Both of the Colossus are gone, and now it's just Vikings. SCV is getting pulled along for the ride as well. Another merit of Terran pushing back against this Protoss army. And that is going to put our Protoss at a temporary income lead. We do have some Archons coming into the mix, but I don't believe... No, we don't even have Psionic Storm available for this Protoss army. The main is lifted, and it is going to be headed for the fourth base. This is where Terran shines. This is that situation where if you park outside of your opponent's base for too long, you will lose. Oh, boy. Well... The pulling of the boys, it was necessary to hold against this, but it will not be necessary to win this. Or will it be? At this point, yes, it's transparent. Cold Mushrooms is behind. Cold Mushrooms, for those of you just now tuning in, is our blue Protoss. <clears throat> and that being said, he's actually, I think, for a player that is on a team that doesn't have a Liquipedia page, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. They're, these guys are not doing too bad against a well-established team like Zoo. I apologize. Toho Project does have a Liquipedia page. It's just that none of the StarCraft players on that team have uh, a Liquipedia page. We don't know anything about these guys yet. Uh, fellas, guys, gals, anyone watching at home? Here we are. Oh boy, Guardian Shield going up yet again. We've got force fields with this army, but it looks like it's instead going to be applied fully to Guardian Shield. Do we have Cyanic Storm? It's just moments away from finishing. I think we have a, t a Protoss that's getting overzealous, but he's pushing back, and he's pushing back with might. Even though he's down 30 supply, he's making a damn good show out of this. Cyanic Storm finishes just in the nick of time, and we see the golden hits. Those cash hits on those bio units, but the spread is just too much. It looks like the Vikings have landed as well, and that means that we're going to see Zykart push this back yet again. God, this has been going on for 26 minutes. It rarely exceeds the 20 minute mark in StarCraft Two Heart of the Swarm, but this is pleasant to watch, even though it is like watching a limping deer running away from a running hunter at many points. It must come to an end one way or another. The ghost coming into the mix now, completely eliminating and nullifying any High Templar that may enter the battlefield, as well as the Hardened Shields of these Immortals. The fourth base will be pushed back to. Scans going down everywhere to thoroughly assess the position of his enemy's army. Zykart is just a few moments away from winning this game, and it looks like he will indeed, at the moment, be conceded by 
his opponent cold mushrooms. That actually says wife's cold mushrooms for his name. And I believe that's that might actually be the name of a 